Now, the UN Security Council has slapped sanctions on Libya's leader, Muammar Gaddafi, and ordered an investigation into crimes against humanity following the bloodshed in the country. Over 1,000 people have been killed in almost two weeks of the uprising against the regime. Let's now cross live to RT's correspondent, Peter Oliver, who is keeping across developments for us in the region. And uh, hello to you, Peter. So uh, talk to us about uh, what exact measures were taken by the UN against Gaddafi's regime. Well, the UN Security Council voted unanimously to impose these sanctions on the Gaddafi regime. Now, they'll take the form of a travel ban against Colonel Gaddafi himself, as well as others close to him, an asset freeze on Gaddafi and his inner circle. There's 16 names on this list. There's also an arms embargo will be placed upon Libya. Now, the resolution that was brought forward by France, the UK, Germany and the United States also contains uh, a referral to the Hague, to the International Criminal Court there, so that they can look into allegations of crimes against humanity committed during the two weeks of violence that we've seen in Libya. Our governments around the world have been doing the best to get their citizens out of the country, but there's also been Libyans trying to get out of the country as well. Around 100,000 are believed to have fled across the border, either into Tunisia or here to Egypt, where I am. Now, many of other nations around the world have been also suspending their diplomatic ties with Tripoli. We heard today on Sunday that um, France will suspend their diplomatic ties with Tripoli. The Russian embassy in the capital of Libya will be taking care of French citizens until the French government can work out a way to get them out of the country. Now, Peter, you're keeping a close eye on what's going on in Libya just from across the border. Uh, so uh, what is the latest you can tell us? Well, I can tell you that in the eastern city of Benghazi, that's been the, the heartland of this, this revolt against the Gaddafi regime, a sense of normality is being returned to the streets there. Now, the pro-democracy supporters, pro-democracy protesters have been trying to reopen shops amongst the, the rubble of those buildings that were destroyed and fighting in that city, a food distribution programs in place in the city as well, and the, uh, the opposition have begun printing their own newspapers papers as well as setting up a radio station broadcasting in Benghazi. Well, as protesters take control of more and more of the country, they're coming across the palaces of the Gaddafi regime. Now, one such palace just outside of, uh, outside of Benghazi has become the, the command center, the center of operations for the movement against the Libyan government, against Colonel Gaddafi. And they've been discovering some interesting things as they've been going through these palaces. And that one in Benghazi, they discovered a bunker that was designed to withstand a, an, an attack from non-conventional weapons, showing the, the security consciousness, the security paranoia, if you will, that was in place in Colonel Gaddafi's mind. Now, we are hearing that Tripoli remains in control of loyalists to Colonel Gaddafi. Now, they've been handing out weapons, troops have been handing out weapons to civilians on the streets of Tripoli and in the Abu Slim district, about six kilometers outside of the, the center of the capital, armed civilians were uh, manning checkpoints, looking at cars, searching cars there and checking identification papers. Now, Many of the citizens of Tripoli have remained inside their homes, locked in doors, scared of these, these armed militia that are patrolling the streets there. But with the latest reports that we do have suggest that just 50 kilometers outside of Tripoli, the city of Zawaya has fallen to the opposition forces. Now, this violence in Libya has been the, the bloodiest across the region. We've seen revolution here in Egypt, where I am, and Tunisia, also violence in other Arab states and North African states. Now, the, um, the violence here, though, far surpassing anything that we've seen elsewhere. At least 1,000 people believed to have been killed so far. All right, Peter, do uh, keep us up to date on this. Artist Peter Oliver, live in Cairo. Thank you.